Welcome to How the Song Came to Be, where soulful songwriters share the stories behind their songs, as well as tools and creative practices you can use to bring your best songs or other creative works to life. I'm Ann Heaton, your host. Writing stuff down was survival for me. It was mm. so intense. There were times when I thought I wouldn't make it. And I know anyone who, you know, everybody will live some part of this story at some point. We'll be a caregiver, we'll deal with illness, we'll deal with dementia. It's just epidemic. Uh, so for me, it was like, oh my God, this is really serious. This is really big. I just got to start writing stuff down. Welcome songwriters. I'm Ann Heaton, your host and founder of Soul Song School. Today, our guest is Jonathan Brooke. Jonathan Brooke began her musical journey as part of the folk pop duo The Story with Jennifer Kimball. Later in 1994, she launched her solo career and has released 12 albums to date. She is known for her elegant and beautifully nuanced songs that delve into both personal and global issues with dignified grace, honesty, and introspection. Her three most recent projects include setting lyrics of uh, of Woody Guthrie from the Woody Guthrie archive and turning them into songs. Her one woman show, My Mother Has Four Noses, which outlines her mother's journey toward the end of her life with dementia, as well as Jonathan's journey in caring for her mother. And her most recent album, Midnight Alleluia, which hopefully we'll hear a little bit about the writing of that today. And she also teaches songwriting um, in Nashville through uh, with Lydia Hutchinson as part of the performing songwriter um, group and hopefully she'll tell us a little bit about that. Welcome to the show, Jonathan. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I had my life flashing before my eyes. <laughs> and ears. Crazy. Oh yeah. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to talk with you thank about you. songwriting today. Um, will you? Would you be willing to start us off with a song? I could do that. I'm gonna try. This is my morning voice. This is my Brenda Vaccaro voice. I'm gonna try a song called Red Dress from a record called Steady Pull. Hot and tight, you can have the upper hand, and I'll pretend to understand why. Came to this, how it came from there to here, how I might not seem clear. What we just do from the start, under my questionable heart's pride. They come to this. Come down in silence, come down in fear, come down in pieces, come down, 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 down in tears. <clears throat> well, there's days when the light is true, days of him, days of you, nights of sweating, toss and turn, nights of feeling super burn. Why you come to this? As we take our places in the charade, if the sun's too hot, well then sit in the shade. Jerry's still out, so we make lemonade. We ask why, why did it come to this? Come down inside. Thank you. 
Yes. Yay. Hopefully I didn't crash the microphone. No, I love <laughs> great mic technique. Yeah. I I'm love like, it. I like, can I get further away? <laughs> I love that you just went for it. Why not? It doesn't matter that it's 10 a.m. Um, well, you have to push that much harder at 10 a.m. to get the, <laughs> to get up there. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, that was so fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. So one of the things, you know, of course, I want to dive into lyric writing and some of the really, um, you know, kind of difficult emotional content that you that you're, you know, you're fearless to go there. But one thing I was thinking about this morning, I want to ask you a musical question. I feel like, um, you know, one of the things I love and have always loved about your music is how like nuanced your melodic choices are, your chord choices, um, some of your tunings. And I feel like there's a way that your music seems to, um, like, not more accurately, but in some ways more accurately depict, like, different shades of emotion, like, what it's really like as a person, mm -hmm. your whole, you're experiencing more than one emotion at a time, you know, versus some songs are, like, they rely heavily on the lyrics. Like, if you didn't speak English and it was in English, you might be like, I don't know if that's a, a romance song or about a war, you know, or other songs are more... Uh, like heavy handed, like, you know, okay, this is a dirge. It's very sad. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that I, I love about what you do. And now that I'm talking to you, I want to ask you like, what, how, what is your approach? What, how would you talk about those choices? Well, I think um, as a, as a listener, as a reader, as a lover of other music, I like when it's complicated. I like when I'm not pandered to. I like it when I'm overestimated in a way as, as a listener, as a mm. reader. And so I, I think that I enjoy writing in that way where, where there's some ellipsis or there's some mystery to it, or I am saying two things at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the listener is invited to, you know, make of it what they will or finish the story in their own vernacular. Uh, th there's, one story in particular I'm thinking about right now called Your House. It's on, it's also on Steady Pull, which, uh, you know, on the surface looks like a love song. Take me down to your house. Show me where you live room by room. You know, I'll give my love angel. I'm here and I am yours. It's, you know, it's just kind of a sweet, sweet love waltz. But at the time that I wrote it, I was also caring for my mom and there it was a very serious situation she lived with me for almost a year this is before the alzheimer's this is like oh. an earlier oh. an earlier year of caregiving where um she had a, a pretty serious bout with skin cancer and so it was like a year of treatment and all sorts of stuff and so at the time i thought okay i might lose her i might be losing my mom so it was also sort of a love song for her and it was like a goodbye the last verse is like oh. um you know I will walk the way and you'll take the journey out path across our hearts, eyes wide open mm. year by year, room by room, one by one um, love. And so it was like this sort of, I was mm. hoping to not beat you over the head with it, but there for me, at least no one might know it ever, but for me, it was this completely dual story. On the one hand, I was falling in love with my husband. On the other mm. hand, I was like cataloging my life with my mother and possibly saying goodbye. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. I love complicated stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> let, let me just highlight that for the songwriters listening. Like, so basically you're saying you like it complicated. You like stories that are complicated and songs that are complicated. So you're writing in that way for others for that reason. And I don't know, I was so moved by your story. I forgot what else <laughs> I was going <laughs> to ask you about that. I'm like, whoa. I um, remember arguing once with a, with a journalist who was uh, much more of a folk fan you know he wanted mm -hmm. all the characters to be established uh he wanted the listener to know just as much as the writer or the or the you know yeah. singer of the song or the voice of the pers persona in the song and i was like what are you talking about like that that just kills all the fun like let's leave something out so that yeah. you know the listener can leave it fill open. in their own story to it yeah now okay so now i remember in terms of your process with that like you you know you like it complicated so I'll, I'll just use myself as an example because it's easier to explain. So if say, say I'm writing something, a lot of times it'll be, um, you know, it'll be sort of instinctual. I'll be humming while I'm walking or maybe I'll see where my hands go. And, um, you know, and I, 
I like it. Okay, maybe I like it 70%. I, so, but I'm never thinking like, oh, I think I'm going to write a song starting on the two chord, or I think I'm, I'm not using any tools I have. But later, I may be like, uh, it's not going, you know, like maybe the melody's only in this range. You know, I, I might pull out some tools and be like, because I don't love it yet, I like it. So maybe I'm, so I'm wondering your process. Like, is it, I'm not oversimplifying it, but is it more instinctual or do you go back and listen and make changes? Um, oh yeah, that's a really good question. I think it, initially, of course, it's instinctual and you, it's like you go where you feel it in your belly. Uh, and you're right, like motion begets songs. You know, if you're taking a walk, you'll, you'll hit the melody in a whole different way and you'll find where the important words are and where you're putting the emphasis. And when I teach, I'm a big, I'm just militant about like, if you do not sing it the way you would say it, I'm done with you. <laughs> because oh, okay. I hate that shit. I hate it when it's like your syllables are all messed up and you're not emphasizing the right word. And, and particularly I will go re-examine things. You know, I do this instinctually now, but I will examine things that are like, where's the most important word? Like mm. that has to be the most important note. Like, mm -hmm. is that your high note? Of course it is. Because if you're saying, love and it's like the the crux of your emotional moment then you better hit it you know in a place that matters melodically and in a range that matters vocally so those are some things that i definitely am very aware of and um try to work into you know once i've got my structure and or my song you know it does sort of happen naturally for me now but those are things that i really do think about Right. Cool. So you may go, I mean, it's happening naturally, but if it didn't, you may go back and say, wait, is that like how I would really say that? Like if I were in a conversation. Yeah. 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 Well, like in the song about, you know, my husband and my mom simultaneously, there's this very poignant, tender part. It's like very, very soft voice. And I'll give my love. What's well, higher than that? It's like wicked high, actually. Give my love, give my love. And then angel, I am here and oh, yeah. I am yours. Oh yeah, I remember that. Oh my God. It's like, a really important moment. And I'm, and so I think I tried to make it like that much more poignant by saying yours on the downbeat, on that tender high voice mm. note, and love mm -hmm. was high and angel was high. And then yours had its whole, it had its own whole space. I am mm. yours. Mm -hmm. And those are like, tooly things, but it, you know, it came out naturally, but I think it all is part of that word painting thing that we strive for. Right. Wow. I love that. I remember that line. That's so beautiful. And so is that, so just to highlight that with a yellow highlighter for songwriters listening, this is something, would you recommend that like, if they don't have it yet or they listen back and they don't love it yet, that they would, that they would practice saying it or just Yes. Okay. Really important. Like if you're stuck or you're not liking it or you're 70%, like you said, take the melody away, take the chords away, just speak it out loud to yourself a million times until it feels like, Oh, this is how I mean it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. And do you, do you ever go back and switch chords later? Oh yeah. Yeah. Me too. Oh yeah. There's always a better chord. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I overfix. I'm like, okay, then I've changed this like 90 times. I need to really stop. Yeah. No, I'm like the I'm like the master of way way too many chords, and I should probably pull some out someday. But you know, oh, no, I it love just it. Makes me happy. Oh no. Well, that well, and that's the whole point. Like, you want to <laughs> make what makes you happy. You know, I'm like, this right. is what I want to listen to, so I'm going to try to. Yeah, okay. more flat fives, basically. More flat fives. Put them. <laughs> Nice, nice. Um, okay, so sort of switching gears for a second, although I do want to come back to lyrics, especially since you were talking about, like, you know, saying the lyrics. But um, so I was thinking about this this morning and just, um, you know, when you were writing about your mom, in, in my experience, like, okay, say when I was getting divorced, it was, it was so the only thing that was happening and so devastating that, of course, I was writing about it because it was very, like, I had to write about it, right? But, um, but most of the time, I'm writing about stuff a year or two later. So, like, right now, I have two little girls, and I, I write about them a little bit, not much, you know? And, like, I'm writing about stuff from, like, three years ago. I'm processing that now. And I was just pondering, like, the level of, of presence that you cultivated or just had when you were, cause caring for your mom, um, 
you know, just to, I'm just going to say what I'm talking about. So Jonathan wrote, <laughs> my mother has four noses, which is a series of songs and a, and a Broadway play um, about her mom's journey. And um, you were, you were collecting those stories and writing them while you were caring for your mom. I just wondered if you would be willing to share like how you, I mean, that's enough of a job to care for your mom, not to be <laughs> doing all that. How, yeah. how did you, how do you explain that or talk about it or? I think that in that kind of a situation, creativity is survival. Uh, I dropped everything. So my mother was my full-time job. I had, I had hoped to, you know, make another record and do my sort of cycle of things, make record tour, write more songs, make new record tour, write new songs. But uh, when it became clear that mom just really needed round clock care, I was just like, Whoa, okay, I'm, I'm in, I'm doing this. And, and my husband also insisted, which, you know, is pretty amazing. He's a saint. Yeah. So once, uh, once, <laughs> once we moved her in, we like packed up an SUV and moved my mom in with us in New York City from Boston. Uh, it became pretty clear, like, wow, okay, this is really intense. This is this is all I'm going to be doing for for quite a while. Who knows how long? So, cre cre writing stuff down was survival for me. It was mm. so intense. There were times when I thought I wouldn't make it. And I know anyone who, you know, everybody will live some part of this story at some point. We'll be a caregiver, we'll deal with illness, we'll deal with dementia. It's just epidemic. Uh, so for me, it was like, oh my God, this is really serious. This is really big. I just got to start writing stuff down. And I got to I gotta find like little moments here and there that, that will fuel me somehow on that side that I'm, I'm missing. I can't go out and tour really. I, I did a few things here and there once I had caregivers that were helping me, but um, it just became survival really. And, and the, I mean, I have to say mom was really complicit in, <laughs> in writing the stories down because she was very funny. She was, she was hysterical sometimes with, you know, she was demented, but she right. came up with all this crazy stuff and she'd be, she'd be saying things like, you might be refrigerated for other expectations, you know, because she loved words. She loved yeah. wordplay. She was a poet. She just yeah. So even when she couldn't find the words she meant, she would just find the biggest ones that could fit in her mouth. And she would just pronounce these things. And I'd be like, mom, that's brilliant. Oh, she said, are you getting this down? Because oh, we yeah. should make a play out of it. And so oh. that became like, all right, that became our sort of banter. And then I'd be like, yeah, mom, I am getting it down because I think this is going to be bigger than the two of us. You know, this might not be just my next record. This might, this is theater. This is good theater. Yeah. She was, she was really funny. So I have to say that mom was complicit in sort of like, write this down, Bully. Bully is my yeah. nickname. So <laughs> Yeah, I heard, I've heard that song. I love that. Yeah, that's I a love good that. one. That's the first one in the show. Are you getting this down? Oh, I get the chills when you talk about that. So did, was there any level of consciousness of like, this is a way to honor my mom or like give her a gift, like knowing where it was headed or was it more just like, you know, I'm going to write this down because that was really funny and I'm a songwriter. That's what I do. Yeah, I didn't have the end. I had no, I had no notion of what it would become. I just knew that it was beautiful, poignant, funny awesome stuff and I didn't want to miss a moment or forget any of it and it was only actually after I started performing the show that I realized wow this is really a love story this is this is like a love story about me and mom and it is a tribute to her and because people started telling me like wow I wish I knew your mom or like you know what a tribute and I'd be like oh that's what okay awesome I guess I got it right <laughs> yeah oh that's so nice yeah that's so nice. But oh and, you know, in the middle of the process, it was just like, how, how do I tell this story to myself, first of all? How do I write this down in a way that is, um, you know, poignant and, and truthful and yet funny and, you know, true to her spirit and her character? And right. so I started journaling about it on my, on my website. I, I had this blog going and I would write journal entries and that was sort of the oh. genesis like, okay these are these can be short stories it can't doesn't have to be overwhelming to me i'll just write short stories i'll write one right. of them last week and then see what comes of it oh so so then you had these series of journal entries that you could yeah. then go back to yeah 
and it was and it never felt like hard it, it did it always feel therapeutic like that it was serving you and and helping you it felt like yeah it felt like if i don't do this i'm going down <laughs> as most caregivers will tell you there are moments you know when you you just you want you're like oh my god this will this end like how 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 much longer yeah because it's that it's that it's that hard i think it's so amazing she was not a sleeper so oh really yeah if you were on night shift it was just brutal (laughs) oh god she was up every 45 minutes wow i think it's so amazing that you did that and so beautiful just Uh, she was pretty awesome You gotta see the show. <laughs> I know I have to see the show. I can't believe I'm talking to you. I mean, well, it's coming to Minneapolis. You're a little closer to me. I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Minneapolis in, in February. Yeah, perfect right. time to be here. <laughs> okay. I used to always tour in Minneapolis in the winter. It's fine. Yeah, there you I'm go. coming. I'm coming to the show. Um, cool. So let me. Um, I you just. I'm remembering like my own grandmother. Like when she yeah. was dying. Like I remember because I heard you say something in an interview, and you're saying it now. But basically, like you know, she was dying and then she, she was on some drugs and she started like doing this weird flirting thing with my grandfather where she'd like, oh her dress, you know, and we'd all be laughing. And then somebody would be like, don't laugh. It's not funny. And we'd be like, no, it, it is. Funny. No, it is funny. Actually, she would you know, love that you're laughing. Probably. It's also tragic, but it's, but it's funny. Like, and so, yeah. Oh yeah. Mom, um, would, mom would flirt with my husband all the time. And then, you know, my brothers <laughs> got kind of wigged out when she forgot who they were and, you know, you know, they're good looking guys. So she would flirt with them and <laughs> it's part of dementia. And if you don't right. sort of know what you're doing, you, you know, you could get really kind of freaked out, but we thought it was hysterical, especially with my husband. She was just so enamored with Pat. It was just awesome. Oh my so gosh. That, yeah. Oh, that, and is that in the show? Uh, we, that part didn't make it in. There's okay. this one, there's one scene where like only Pat could comfort mom when she was at her, you know, in the throes of despair. Like she needed a man's voice. So we'd, we'd run, we'd like get Pat, Pat, please, can you just come give mom a hug? Can you, we can't get her out of this mood. So Pat would come and he'd give her a big hug. And then little by little, she'd sort of stop, you know, sobbing <laughs> like that. And then she would start sort of feeling his, his shoulders and then his, his arms. And <laughs> she'd just be like, <sighs> and one day she's like, golly you are built now and then she turns to me she goes like now did i have him first or did you <laughs> and I just like lost it laughing and mom was like so thrilled that she made us all laugh that she made you laugh the, t- oh. yeah, the tantrum was gone and the mood was gone and she just flirted for pat you know with pat for 20 more minutes and everything was fine oh that's, <laughs> golly, so, you are built. that's so funny that's so funny that's awesome yeah um all right, let me ask you, um, I have so many questions, I don't know why, why I ask first, but it sounds like, so obviously this was super therapeutic. Are you ever in a situation, I feel like I work with some songwriters who are like, like there's someone that I have in mind right now who's writing something about her grandparents and the war, and it's actually really hard for her to go there, but she feels like it's a song she has to write. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things we talked about is just writing for 30 minutes or writing for an hour and then walking away if it's too much. Are there have you had that experience? And if so, like, what are some of the ways you kind of take care of yourself? Mm. If you feel like it's worth it? That's a really good question. There's one song in particular called the angel in the house, which is on a record called the angel in the house. And it was a song pretty much about my parents' divorce. And my family didn't talk about stuff. You know, we, it was just a total shock when, they came to us and said, you know, this happened and we're getting divorced. And we're just like, what? We, you know, we like never witnessed anger our entire lives. And we were all grown ups at the time. And it was just like, this is so weird. This is just so weird. But I ended up, you know, delving into it and writing about it. And I had the whole first line of the song for, for a while. Um, the, the, the first line is, my mother moved the furniture when she no longer moved the man. We thought nothing <gasps> I can't believe you're saying time. that. You know, did you know that I've been interviewed Vance Gilbert the other day and he talked about the song? He talked, oh, no, about, he talked about your song. Sorry, go ahead. I no, can't shit. Okay, yeah, go okay, ahead. So I wrote that first line, you know, we thought nothing of it at the time. And, and it was a really, I thought it was a really good opening line. My mother moved the furniture, which is true. Like she would just, whenever there was something wrong, mom would just move furniture and that would be her therapy 
or she'd move, like move ge ge geographically. Um, but I, I played it for my brothers and they're like, you can't write that song. You can't, you can't say that. That's too, that's too close to the bone. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? It's like, it's truthful. It's how I feel. It's what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so I sat on it for like a year, year and a half. And the song, you know, I kept trying other ways into the song. It's just like, how am I, how am I not going to say this? This is, this is my opening line. So I, I did it. I finished that song and it, it was terrifying every time I performed it, but it was my truth. And I sort of felt like I'm a writer. I have, I got to do what I got to do. I, hopefully my parents who are both writers will forgive me and understand. We never talked about it ever. Mm. But that mm -hmm. song is on the record and it, it, it's a song that so many people connect to and want to hear. And, um, you know, it's, it's brutal. Yeah. But you have to write your song. Yeah. And, well, when you say something really brutal, just yeah. keep it to yourself for a while, but write it. Yeah. Yeah. So basically for the songwriters listening, you have a choice. Like you don't, you didn't have to put it out right away. You sat on it, you right. thought about it and then finally decided that it was worth it. And yeah. that, and I feel like when you do say something that brave, one of the reasons it resonates so strongly is other people were afraid to say it, but so many people have experienced it. So yeah, yeah. it's huge. And I think that's similar with, with the mom show and some of the songs on, on the mom record. Uh, there's such relief in the audience when people come to see that performance because I'm saying some really tough stuff that everybody feels when they're a caregiver. And, and everyone has these crazy roller coaster experiences with dementia with their parents in general. I mean, it's, it's everybody's story really. And there's such relief and that people stay for the talkbacks afterwards. Like most of the audience stays because they, they're so, it's like I've declassified this scary stuff. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God, thank you for saying this. And let's talk some more. I need to tell you my story. Yeah. Well, and I feel like people are so like death phobic in our, in our, in our culture. I mean, I don't, I haven't really lived other places, but I feel like that song that you have where you're saying, I'm not ready. Like today's not a good day, yeah. you know, for, for your mom to die and tomorrow's not great either. Um, like, I feel like that's something that people are feeling on some level, like all the time, you know, and yeah. for you to just come out and say it, it's just like, Oh yeah, that, that's it, you know, but we have sort of some rules around like how much we talk about death. I don't, I don't even know what that is, but yeah. yeah. So thank you. <laughs> we got to talk about death. <laughs> so uh, I'd love to talk to you tomorrow about death. If you could, yeah, meet up for an it's interview. It's a hot new topic on every pop songwriter's lips. <laughs> I can't wait for Miley Cyrus to do my death song. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, all right. Get, maybe getting back to, to craft for a second. Um, so I heard you say that one of the ways that you started writing about your mom was just doing these journal entries. So it's not like yeah. you were sitting down and you were like, I'm writing a song. So you were, you had, you had that to go back to. So that's a technique that you use yeah. um, that you also, if you write something that feels too raw or might hurt someone's feelings, you can sit on it. You don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be shared, but you still write yeah. it. You got to get it out though. You can decide later. Yeah. Um, and um, I guess what I'm wondering is, I forgot what I'm wondering because I just thought about a song that I wrote that I never that I couldn't share. Oh. So like four years later, I like used it for parts. I like pulled out the, <laughs> the core emotional message, but changed the people. Yeah. And that song never was only heard by a very few people. But anyway. But it's um, like auto parts. You know, you never know when the carburetor for the old car will fit in your new one you just got. So what the hell? Yeah. The parts. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, when you went back to those journal entries, what are some of the, like, what do you, here's what I want to know. What do you, when songwriters come to you, cause you teach all the time and they're maybe like 60% done, but they're stuck. What do you, what do you tell them? What are the ways you get unstuck? I say, okay, try it in three. What happens if you make this a waltz? Mess with your brain. Um, try it twice as fast or twice as slow, like change up your groove, change your tempo again, take it away from your melody and your chords, go walk it out, like walk it out, walk in the pace of what you had, slow it down, speak it to yourself, um, see if that unlocks you, because often that will be what, what, what kicks me in the butt and leads me to like the missing chorus or like, oh, that, there's, a, there's that next word, 
uh, there's the cord or whatever. Um, just ch change it up in your head. I can't even tell you how many times in songwriting workshops you challenge someone to just change the groove of it and all of a sudden the song feels right. Mm. Or it just feels wrong in, their, in whatever register they're singing and you're like, hey, why don't you, you know, move the capo up three frets, see what happens. And you're like, oh, there's your voice. There's that mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. So just try stuff like that. And is that something like for you, like obviously you did that for someone else. You gave them an idea. Mm -hmm. They had that feedback. Is that something that you're always able to do for yourself? Or do you ever have a song that's maybe like 80% of the way there and you're like, I'm going to call so-and-so and play this for them because I, I just need someone else to tell me maybe what I already know. Uh, yeah, I, I'm so paranoid. <laughs> I'm so paranoid about playing anything or anybody until it's finished. It's very rare that I will call and ask advice. I'm just, I'm just super... I have trouble singing like I'm all alone in my house now I still I still have trouble singing like because the neighbors might hear oh yeah <laughs> like singing louder trying stuff I just I'm super super paranoid I, and it's always been this way I'll always be in tears when I ever first perform a song for anybody it's mm. it's really it's mm -hmm. rocky uh so yeah I I'm not very good at advice for that I need to get braver. In fact, I did just get braver. I did this um, recording workshop, like finding your voice in the studio workshop in Nashville last week. And oh, nice. I decided to put myself on the hot seat and, you know, cause everyone was terrified. It's like some of them had never been in the recording studio before and they were in there to like demo their songs, like play the guitar and sing oh. the microphone and learn about compression and reverb and headphones and mic proximity and all this stuff. And they were, you know, they were terrified. So I decided to like, terrify myself and and I had just finished a song so I demoed my brand new terrifying song first so that they'd see me like just dying of fear and terror and procrastinating just getting in front of the mic and they'd see that you know we're all in the we're all in the same boat oh I think it's so good to be able to like not embarrass yourself but be super vulnerable yeah. in front of people that you're working with and just be like see I'm not going to just show you my ultra finished shiny no, thing. So, I yeah. went for it and, and it was really fun. And I think that it loosened them up too. So then they were able to be like, well, all right, it's, this is my turn. I'm, I can do this. Yeah. So um, what when so just to highlight what you said, because I just like to point it out so people remember, if you're kind of stuck on a song, you can change it to a waltz. You can change the feel, the groove, slow it down, go walking. Um, what if you feel like, somebody doesn't have the heart of the emotional matter yet, or they're like, mm. this isn't quite what I mean. It's almost what I mean. How do you engage writers around that? You could just say like, <laughs> I think this is Mary Gautier who does this. Like I call bullshit on that chorus. <laughs> ah, I love that. I think that's a Mary Gautier thing. I, what do you really mean? Like, what are you saying? Like I call bullshit. I think what you're really saying is you want out of your marriage, you know, or like, yeah. And then the person would be like, uh -oh. uh, and they'll be like, uh, and I haven't been to one of her workshops, but I hear it's like going to church and you get, you get therapyized and you get religionized and you, not in a religious way, but you just get like, oh, okay, here's what I'm really trying to say. And I yeah. think that's what, what you might do is just say, all right, what, what am I really trying to say? Like get away from your perfect rhymes and your stanzas yeah. and whatever, just like write freehand for 10 minutes without stopping. Do not let yourself stop. Just write down like, like what is it that I'm really trying to say? I fucking hate this marriage. I need to get out of this marriage. <laughs> right. If that's what it is. Right. And then, and then you'll be like, Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. It's scary. And then you find, then you realize like, Oh, there's a reason why I was avoiding yeah. saying what I really meant. Cause that in that case is really, really scary. Yeah. Right. I call bullshit on my course. I love that. Yeah. What? So yeah. Ask yourself, what am I really trying to say? And just free writing on that. And then one and thing then I in your free oh. writing, you'll find tidbits. You'll find some gold. You'll you yeah. Know, there'll be like a phrase or something like, oh my god, that's my hook. Yeah. 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 Totally. And also, just like I was thinking earlier about, um, well, you were talking about, um, are, are you getting this down, bully? Mm -hmm. I I love like just taking what people actually say like your mom actually said that you didn't have to like you make a metaphor like she said it and you wrote it down or like um even like I think like Annie I hope things line up for you all in a row shiny and new like it's like you're talking to her in a conversation or 
um, Bonnie Hayes' song, like, Have a Heart, that starts with, like, hey, shut up. Like, don't, oh, don't lie to me. Like, yeah. you know, like, there are people in the middle of a conversation, which is, like, I feel like what all of those things are. You can, if you just start writing about, you know, so say you want out of the marriage, you just start writing the scene, something yeah. that this person said. Yeah. Or, like, try an exercise of putting yourself in the other person's shoes and writing what they uh, would say. Yeah. Or just in general, like try writing from a totally foreign perspective, like write, you know, write from the guy down the street's point of view, like in his voice. Nice. Yeah. That's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I always resist doing that. That's why I, that really hits home. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's weird, but like it, it, in the bully song and, you know, are you getting this down? I'm my mom you know, in those mm -hmm. first two verses mm -hmm. and, and it, it, it has that much more poignancy and, and weight to it because it's, it's mom saying, are you getting this down? This is good stuff. Are you getting yeah. this down? You know, you really should. And, um, and, and then she's in a more sane voice saying like all my pretty promises, all my, all my pretty promises, my desperate amends, my desperate amends couldn't put me back together again, but you did you did. And that's something that she told me. You know, oh. She said, I couldn't have done this without you, Bully. So I got to be her voice in that song, saying that to me. <laughs> and then at the end of the song, I come back to like, are you getting this down? Yes, I did. I did, mom. I, I did. I got it down and here, and here it is. <laughs> so beautiful. So beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing <laughs> that. Thank you for going there. Um, <gasps> So good. So is there, would you be willing to share a song with us and tell us the story of how it came to be written? I feel like we've been doing a little bit of that the whole time. Yeah, sure. Well, this is on the new record. Okay. <laughs> uh, the record's called Midnight Hallelujah. And it's, it's actually uh, kind of about my husband. You know, it's like, it's called Too Much Happiness. <laughs> which I got was another one of my songwriting things is like, I'm just an avid reader. I, I was an English major in college, but I'm just reading all the time. Mm -hmm. Nonfiction, fiction, poetry, love poetry, love short stories. Uh, and Alice Monroe is one of my favorite, favorite writers. And she mm -hmm. had a collection of short stories. Uh, I can't remember if this, if, if it won the, one of those massive prizes, the Pulitzer, or she has one, like one of the biggies, I think it was the Pulitzer for, for fiction, but um, she had a collection called Too Much Happiness. Mm. I was like, that is just, what a great hook. Like, I know what that means. It's like that exquisite, excruciating thing of the ephemeral nature of joy and happiness. Like, it, it, it's, it's almost too much. You can't bear it because it's like, it might not last or it's, yeah. it's too good. And do I deserve this? And so anyway, that's how, how this came about. Ah, okay, here we go. Lost without you here. Desperate when you're far. Nothing even matters. And I'm not where you are. It's too much happiness, my love, too. Too much happiness, too much happiness. Too little time, you. I swear my heart explodes each time that you're near. Still weak in the knees when you whisper that you're here. Too much happiness, my love, too. Too much happiness, 
happiness, too much happiness, too little time. You say no worry, you say no fret, but I say I can't get enough of you yet. You say tomorrow will come what may, but what if tomorrow doesn't mean always? Life's too short for this much love. So I swear it on the start. I'll be here forever, wherever you are. It's too much happiness, it's breaking my heart. And too much happiness right from the start. Too much happiness, and too much happiness, and too much happiness, too little time, too little time. Thank you so much. Yay. You're welcome. I love that you love your husband. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so lucky. I'm, I came in together for 20 years. We just had our uh, 15th wedding anniversary, but it's really 20 years from the real, real beginnings. And um, it's just so lucky. I'm so, so lucky. It's so, it's so happy to hear songs like that. I feel like there, <laughs> I feel like there aren't as many of those. So it's just like, I know, I know. like contagious. Um, and I don't write, you know, that many happy songs. So it's like, oh yeah, a happy one. Well, it sounds sad, but it's happy. <laughs> it reminds me of the one where um, now, of course I can't, but you're like, I'll take your name or it's almost like you're, you're owning Mm. It was when you first met him or something. Everything or, I wanted. Yeah. yeah, like it's just like owning that. So yeah. love that. Um, which So this actually reminds me of this thing I wanted to ask you about stage presence. Uh, yeah. Because, um, you know, just like in that song, you're, you're acknowledging the happiness and that it's here, even though it could leave, you know, <laughs> life <laughs> could be short. But in terms of something I've always loved about you is that um, sometimes I feel like I mean, men do it too, but I feel like some women performers um, may um, kind of endear themselves to the audience almost like by maybe, I mean, <laughs> putting themselves down a little bit or, yeah. or like not taking up space or, you know, I mean, some of it might be like, you know, I'm just like you, you know, whatever. But I feel like you don't, um, you don't do that. Like you, you just like own the space very naturally and I just wonder how you think about it and if that if you got that from your mom or you're just that way or huh I, I mean I just never, love it thank you so much I've I've never been asked that question I I think it took a long time you know to to build that kind of confidence of like this is who I am um and I'm gonna tell you about it rather than oops, sorry, I hope you like this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that, that's just, I think, experience and loving what you do enough and loving your songs enough to feel like they're the focus almost, like, and you get to sing them every night. Mm -hmm. in a way. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what it feels like. You know, that I'll go into, like, the Bully song, the Are You Getting This Down song, be, and I'll just be so excited to sing it because... I find new things in it every night and it moves mm. me to tears still every night. And I just love the opportunity to like throw it out there one more time. And, and, and I love when people get it, you know, when you see in their faces, they're like, Oh yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. So that doesn't quite answer the question. I think it's just this, this hard one, like, all right, I've earned this spot on this stage. Mm -hmm. and I'm good at what I do and I love my job and mm -hmm. so 
check this out. I love I, that. Yeah, I think that's kind of, but it's hard one. I mean, they're, with the early days, you know, so nervous and so nervous between songs. Like, what do I say? Like, how do mm. I be funny? How do I tune and talk at the same time? And those are things that just, you know, 25 years later, yeah, that it's comfortable and it's like no big deal. And I think the most important thing, actually, somebody told me this once, like, take your time. They're with you. Mm, take your they're time. with you. They don't care if you're tuning. The more you're nervous, the more they're nervous for totally. you. Totally. So like, you got to tune your guitar. Big fucking deal. Tune your guitar. Mm-hmm. You want your song to sound great. So like, own it. And if you're, if you're cool, they're cool. And they're with you. They want, they want you to rock. They want you to rock. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I love that. I love it. I love, um, just to say it back, say it out. I love mm-hmm. that the, the, this is something you can tell yourself if you don't have a ton of experience performing yeah. that the songs are the focus. So in that way you're out of, and that you feel like it's a privilege to get to present them. So that, yeah. that, that kind of takes it off you. And so that's something you can try if you don't have a ton of experience uh, performing or if you still get nervous. And then also that it takes time, that it, you weren't Ugh. like this the first time you played. And that- Oh my God, Jennifer and I were, were just so nervous. The first time we, <laughs> we used to do our first gigs, we were just <gasps> so nervous. You could hardly breathe and then not oh. knowing what to say and then like making really dumb banter, trying to be funny, but it not being funny and the awkward <laughs> silences. And, I mean, at least there were two of us where we could like, you know, Right. And you talk. Other, but yeah. yeah. Like you, right. you got this now. Like I got a tune. Help. I, I can't think of anything. You talk. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I have to say like, it is such a gift though to watch you play. And it's sort of like an, you know, it's subliminal, but it's like, Oh, she doesn't feel like she needs to apologize for mm. anything. And so I don't have to, I don't yeah. have to either. And, and I feel like it's such a gift that you're giving. Um, even if it's, that's not your primary very intention. Yeah. Um, so. Also, I think it's really important, number one, like to get inside your song. So you're reliving it every night. You're, you're living it in a new way as if it's a new, like, I, as if like, oh, wow, I can tell it this way this night or mm. I can do this on this thing. But also just from a performer to a performer, like make sure you don't just close your eyes and shut out the audience. They, they want you to, they want to be engaged. They want you they want to feel like you are singing to them. Mm-hmm. And this is something I've learned from like my favorite performers. Al Jiro had this. Um, Cyril M.A. is this young jazz singer. Unbelievable on stage. Um, but she has this engaging like warmth and charisma that makes every person in that room feel like it's about them. And I oh, think yeah. it's really don't close your eyes just because you're nervous. Like engage and look you know make sure you're addressing the entire audience like in, include everybody in your visual reference um you may not even be able to see them pretend you can like pretend yeah. like it's it's um again it's hard one you, you have to learn this and closing your eyes is much easier because it's less yeah. scary and you're yeah. not making eye contact with someone that might may have a weird look on his face. A weird look on their face, yeah. he knows it or not. Like some people have like the weirdest audience faces and that, you know, they'll be like <laughs> for the whole show. And then at the end, they'll be like the first one on their feet, standing ovation, yeah. clapping their brains out. And you'd be like, well, where the hell were you the last right. hour and a half? That's like, the guy who buys like 10 of your record. But yeah. the whole time you're like, that guy hates me. Yeah. yeah. The whole time he's got like, fuck you face on. And you're like, <laughs> Oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to win this. I'm going to win this guy over. I'm singing right. To, I'm going to fucking get you. Dude. Mm, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Be proactive. That's so yeah. great. Yeah. I remember like being so nervous that I would close my eyes so that I could reopen them, like mm-hmm. go inside and then mm-hmm. I'll look back at you, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Cool. That's so great. So I know you have some really good news and, and all, anyone listening obviously can go to jonathabrook.com to hear the news, but here's some very fresh news that. Well, I just found out last week that we are bringing my mother has four noses to Minneapolis in February. So get your, you know, nano puff pants and your smart wool underwears and your big muckalucks and come to Minneapolis in February and see my mother has four noses. <laughs> Awesome. I can't wait. I will be there. And I'm going, I mean, I'm coming. I missed it the first time. I don't know what happened. I think maybe I had a brand new baby. I don't know what happened, but well, that could have, uh, 
That might have been so. yeah. you might have been it. Um, and then before we say goodbye, is there any parting advice you have for songwriters? If you could say one thing that I would like to leave them with. Yes, because this is my other pet peeve. Like, don't be afraid of the downbeat. <laughs> Oh, don't like stop being afraid of the downbeat. So many people will, they'll hit their downbeat and then they'll start sort of meandery singing. I call it like meander singing. Like, so they'll be like, hmm. And you're like, dude, the downbeat is a powerful tool. Do not ignore its power. That's my last thing. I like. love that. No one has said that yet. That's fantastic. Oh, it's just such a pet peeve of mine. Cause yeah. uh, uh, there'll be like a song, you know, like dude, one, da 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 one, da 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 right. one, da 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 and you'd be like, how about ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-